this video, I'm going to show you how to use AI Builder integration in Copilot Studio. So the first question you might have is, what is AI Builder to begin with? And why do I even care about what AI Builder is? So AI Builder is the ability for you to be able to, with a low code way, to be able to go out and be able to build your own custom prompts. And you can choose which particular um, AI model you want to use, and you can give it all the information that you want, provide it, here's the data that I want you to use as part of this, and also even put dynamic inputs into uh, the, the prompt that you're going to build out so that that way you can be in really tight control of this AI model response that you're trying to get. And so think of it that in the case of the demos that I'm going to do with you today, I'm going to show you how you can use it for sentiment analysis or looking for PII data in uh, some information that you're passing, or even being able to go in and say, I want to go summarize something out of Dataverse. Those are just examples of things you can do with AI Builder. The list is quite long of th different things that you can come up with for this. And I would encourage you to go out and explore this on your own. Okay guys, so you can see that I've built myself a co-pilot that just is completely blank here, right? And I think the first thing that a lot of people are gonna ask about is where do you go to manage your prompts or create prompts in AI Builder, all of these different things. Now, I'm gonna show you a way you can do it inside of Copilot Studio more effectively but I want to make sure that it's understood that AI Builder is just another part of the Power Platform, just like Power Apps or Power Automate. And so what I think is the easiest way to be able to do this is you can come in and just say that you want to export or whatever, and it'll take you to the Power App Solutions page. Once you're in here, you'll see here that there's an AI Hub. Now, if you don't see AI Hub, it's because you may not have it pinned and you can go and grab it here and uh, pen it. And once you go into AI Hub, the AI Hub is going to have here are all the different ones that I've created for this particular video. You can see here I've got one that summarizes accounts in Dataverse. I've got one that looks up PII information or, or looks for PII information to come back to me. And I can have even a sample response and that sample response is just basically going to be a sentiment analysis that I've done um, on this. Now, if you come up here and you click on prompts, you'll see that there's a bunch of different things that you can do with this. And you can do your own uh, create text back. You can summarize. You can extract information from text. You can classify the text. You can do sentiment analysis or respond to a complaint. These are all just templates. Uh, that you can use. And if you click one of these, it's going to bring out basically the AI Builder interface. So I'll just click on one just as an example here, just to give you kind of a starting point. And you can see I can name it up here. And then what you're going to have here is where you can say, oh, I want to add an input. And that input could be text or, or that you're going to pass in or a query that you're going to pass in. Uh, and then you, of course, can delete the input you have data in case you want to add any type of Dataverse data into it. You have your output. Do you want it to be in text or do you want it to be in JSON? You can also come in here and determine what GPT model you want to use. So we got five. Turbo is the default, but 4.0 is available as well in preview. And then this temperature setting is basically how creative you want it to be. So uh, notice here you can even click once you get in, you can even click one of these and it'll give you an example. So you can say, set an analysis of text. It'll automatically create everything that you need, including the input over here. Uh, I can change this to four as an example. And then I can come in here and actually put something in. So I could say, uh, Dwayne's videos are amazing and then run a test prompt against it. And what you're gonna see is it's gonna come back and say, the sentiment of the test data that I put in was positive. 
So this is just an example of how you can do things in AI Builder. If I came in here and I said uh, sediment uh, was what I was going to call this one, and then I save the custom prompt out, this is going to give me the ability to save this, and now I can reuse this particular one over and over and over uh, inside of Copilot Studio or even in other Power uh, Platform uh, scenarios. And if you'll notice here that we created this and you see it right here in the sentiment, and if you want to delete it, you can just come in and just as easily just hit delete and voila, now it's gone. So this will give you perspective of just AI builder and where to go get it and things of that nature. So let's flip back over to Copilot Studio. Okay, so now that we're back inside of Copilot Studio, you can see that I've got just a basic blank AI, AI builder integration titled Copilot. Inside of it, you're going to see that I have added a knowledge source, and you'll see why as part of the test that I'm going to run through, or the scenario I'm going to show you today. And, it, and I'm just using Microsoft.com. The other thing is that you'll see that I've got some topics, and you'll even see here I've got a uh, specific set of topics that I have created. But everything else pretty much is blank at this point. I will add that if you go into settings and you go to the generative AI, in this particular demo, I am just using classic mode. And because all I'm wanting to do at the NLU level, at the top level for like intent detection or entity extraction, I don't really need anything complex. I just wanted to be able to build an example in the demo. But it also shows you that if you're even using traditional NLU, you can still take advantage of this particular feature. So. Let's jump back over and let's take a look at a couple of things that I'm going to do. So let's do our first test scenario. And in our first test scenario, I want to go in and take a look at the topics. And what you're going to see is that the first one I want to look at is this one right here. This, I want to ask a question. And in this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I have a question. I'm going to collect the question. Then what I'm going to do with that question is I'm going to pass it back in to this particular um, into this particular AI prompt. And with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to say that I want to have a piece of input or a query. Then in that query. I actually want to say, determine if there's any personal identifiable information in this, and then return back uh, the response. Notice that one of the things that I did find to be helpful is GPT-4.0, but you can do this with 3.5. It works fine, but I'm just doing it with uh, 4.0. And this is the same basic thing that we saw before. If you see here, I've got an example, and if I do a test prompt on this, You'll see that it comes back with true. And then if I just say uh, something like, you know, I like dogs, right? And run the test prompt again, you'll see it will come back as false. And so this is basically all it's doing is it's basically that prompt is just analyzing whether or not there is PII data in the particular implementation uh, or the query that I'm running through it. Then what you'll see is it comes back, it gives a result. That result will come back in a record, guys. So one of the things that you need to do is you need to do this. You need to actually go in and say that what you're looking for is, is the result of the string of the text that comes back. So when you go in and you start to create that, just be aware that you can see it right here, that it's the text that's coming back that I wanted. And then I'm saying, if this contains false, and I'm not using uh, case sensitivity in this, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to answer the question using the Microsoft um, the, or the data sources or the knowledge that I've provided. If not, then, uh, and if it comes back with an answer, go ahead and uh, answer the question. If not, uh, it's just going to go on through. Now. The other thing is, is that if this was true or any other condition is met, 
what you're going to see is it's going to come back and it's going to say, I can't answer this question because it contains PII information. So basically, I'm looking for a true false here coming back from that model to be able to do this. So let's play with it and let's actually see it see it work. So the first thing I want to do is I want to I want to trigger this topic and I'm going to make sure that track between topics is on for you guys so you can see this thing work. And I'm just going to say, I have a, a question. Now it's going to ask me for my question. And what I've done is I've come up with a couple of quick ones here, just so that that way you guys can see this work. So in this, I'm going to say, if my email address is blah, 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 then I want to order a Surface laptop. Where do I do it? Now, this is because what I'm trying to do is find out, did this have PII information? And as you can see, it had PII information. So because of that, we went this particular direction. Now, if I just simplify that query and I and I remove the PII out of it and I just come in and say, um, oh, I first have to trigger the topic. So let's just say I have a question. And then let's just simplify it down to I just I want to order a Surface Laptop, where do I order it? Now in this case, what you're going to see happen is it's going to come down, it's going to get an answer from the generative AI model, from the knowledge, and voila, here you go. Here's where you can order a Surface Laptop. So pretty simple, but very powerful because now I've got the ability to, to look for PII information, anything that I want to uh, provide back into this model so I can go analyze that before I actually go do something with it. So a lot of people have been asking how to hook inside of generative answers to say, how do I make sure that there's no PII data that's being passed downstream? Well, this is where you can intercept the activity.txt, which is the question the person asked, and pass that through. Now, could I do this all the way inside of the conversational boosting right here? Absolutely, you can add that logic right there if you wanted to. Now, I didn't do that just because of the fact I wanted to show you uh, kind of the end-to-end -end logic just to make sure that you guys could see that. So now, let's talk about one of the others that I've got. So let's take a look at the sentiment topic, okay? Now, in this case, what I'm going to do is kind of what I showed earlier, which is I'm going to come in, I'm going to trigger the topic, and then I'm going to go to the prompt and I'm going to pass the query the user gave and I'm going to ask for the sentiment to be analyzed on this and come back and what it's going to do is it's going to come back in that record and if you remember I had said that you have to get the text so you can see here I'm going to answer the question about what is the sentiment of what was just said so to trigger this just to show it to you and see it work and again this is just simplistic uses guys I can say, I don't like the sentiment topic, and you're going to see it come back as negative. But if I think, if I come back and give it a positive item and go through this same path, you're going to see that it's going to come back and say that it's positive, right? Now, there's one last thing that I did in this demo uh, to kind of show you guys how I pulled this off. And that's going to be that I also have a different one where I want to summarize accounts. And in this case, I'm going to say that I want to summarize an account. I'm going to select one of the accounts so that that way I can choose which account we want to get a summary of. At this point, what I'm doing is I'm just basically taking this and changing this choice option into a string. And then I'm passing that string in to go and look it up in Dataverse and summarize that particular account uh, information. Return the summary, again, it'll come as a record. And I'm just gonna say, give me the text of that back. So let's do that really quick, just so that we can see it. So first thing I'll do is I'll just say, summarize an account. Now let's select one. Uh, let's select Contoso Limited. And there you go. Here is the actual summary of the information that's inside of Dataverse for that particular account. Now, so let's take a look at the summarization action. The summarization action inside of AI Builder is 
pretty simplistic in the way that it works. It's basically where I take an input. The input is where I'm going to say, okay, I want to pass in the, uh, the account name that I'm looking for. And then what you're going to see is that I'm taking this and I'm saying, okay, I want to summarize this. Now, we need to look at the data here. And I'm telling it, filter this data in the account table by the text that was entered up here. So this is going to say, I'm looking for an account name with this text. Then on the left-hand side, you can see that I've come in here and I've given it a prompt where I say, summarize the following account information. The account information is, and you can see I can go in and I can add additional things by just getting insert an account and then choosing what I wanted. So like if I wanted the zip code, I can put the zip code in and such. Now, you know, you have to have data inside of your table, all of that wonderful jazz um, and such. But you'll see here that in this one, I put Northwind Traders in as a sample so that I could test this. And you can test your prompt and it'll go out, it'll pull that information back, and then it's going to give me the prompt response right here. And you'll see here, this is the prompt response. And again, this is exactly what I used when I went in and just presented it back as text. So I can totally go do that. Again, the output I told just to be text versus JSON. Other thing is I'm using GPT 4.0 in this particular one. So this gives you kind of a idea of how you can do summarization actions. I hope you found these videos to be super helpful today. And if you like what you've found, please go out and like and subscribe to my channel. And as always, you can try Copilot Studio at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.